My name is Patrick and this is Everyday Tech. Everyday Tech for Everyday People. And this coming up weekend, I'll be taking a trip to San Francisco. Now, my main computer that I'm bringing is my M1 11-inch iPad Pro. I'm leaving the MacBook Air at home. Even though I'm going for personal reasons and to see family, I'll be there a good solid five days, which means at least two of those days I'll be working remotely. In this video, I'm gonna give you my experience of using the iPad as my main computing device. In fact, I'll be working on at least two videos there. The video that you're seeing now and a products video. I'll be doing all that editing on Final Cut Pro for the iPad. Now, I've never used Final Cut Pro on the iPad. In fact, I don't even have it installed on this iPad, but I will before I leave. So I'll do a separate video on my experience of using Final Cut Pro on the iPad itself. Now it's been a few weeks since I've been on my trip and I only brought a backpack with me with five days worth of clothes. Now the only reason why I was able to do this light load and only bring a backpack with me is because I left the laptop at home and brought my 11 inch iPad Pro. Now let me tell you some of the, my setup here and the main accessories that I brought and the advantages and disadvantages of having this setup. The main accessory that I brought was Apple's smart keyboard folio case. Now this is not the smart keyboard with trackpad. I don't think that's really worth it. And it's a little bit too expensive, especially for this particular iPad. But I think the smart folio case is the best accessory you can get. Now I, of course, I don't have the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, which I think the smart folio case with trackpad might be a better fit for that iPad. Now the obvious advantage of using this setup is portability. This is super light and compact. Now, if it wasn't obvious, I was trying to save money on my ticket. So that's why I only brought a personal item with all my clothes in it. And saving money means I had economy basic as well, which means tighter seats. Now, even with the tighter seats, I was able to use the iPad in front of me very easily, even with the keyboard. And I didn't miss the mouse because I was able to touch the screen in front of me. Now this is rated at 10 hours, which is not the greatest, but it was really nice to be able to use the iPad and charge it up with even a battery bank, even while I was using it. Now, other than software, the main disadvantages of using this setup is, it is a smaller screen, so I am missing that bigger screen. But if I was using the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, I don't think I would be able to use the uh, iPad in front of me, at least to work on with the keyboard very comfortably. And the other thing about the setup is, it's a little bit uncomfortable and awkward using it on my lap. So if I don't have, I'm at a coffee shop and there's no tables available, I have to sit down in a seat. It's a little bit awkward using it on my lap. Let's talk about the main thing that really determines whether I can use this as my full-time computer or not, software. Now there's no doubt that this is one of the best, if not the best consumption device as far as entertainment is concerned. What about the other two main areas of my life where I really need a computer? work and content creation. As far as work is concerned, I have to ask myself, can this iPad do everything I need to do and how efficient can I do it? In my line of work, I would say I can do about 90 to 95% of my work on this iPad, assuming I have a good internet connection. But as far as efficiency is concerned, on my laptop, I can easily do things two to three times faster. Now, it's not just because I'm used to the laptop more, which is part of it. But on my laptop, I have all the tools and software I need to get my job done very efficiently. Now on the iPad, there's either not an equivalent app or the alternative apps on the iPad are very clunky. So in general, as far as work is concerned, this is not replacing my computer anytime soon. But there might be some situations where I need to get only a few things done. I'm in a good situation where I have a good internet connection. In those situations, yeah, I can bring my iPad only. When we talk about using a computer, one of the main things is multitasking. And when we talk about multitasking on an iPad, we have to talk about Stage Manager. Stage Manager has greatly improved over the past couple of versions. I like how we can reposition the windows anywhere on the panel not in, and not in a certain grid layout. Depending on the application, you can kind of resize the windows any size you want. Now, the main disadvantage of using it, especially on an 11 inch iPad is certain applications, you could tell they were made to be full screen. So for example, the YouTube app, if I turn on Stage Manager, it makes it a little bit smaller and then it just messes up with the layout. Sometimes I wanna have the right side be the 
uh, description or if I'm watching a live YouTube video, I want to see the chat on the right side there and watch the video on the left. Now I can put this full screen, but when you put an application full screen, even with stage manager on, you miss the stackable applications there. So why use stage manager? Because you could tell stage manager was made or optimized for the 12.9 inch iPad, but why use stage manager on an 11 inch iPad? Well, the part of the reason why I do use stage manager is it allows me to run multiple applications at once and especially session-based applications. So in my line of work, I, lie, I have to log into servers remotely and I use the Blink app as an SSH client. So part of this, what happened before was sometimes I have to go back and forth between, let's say a web browser and my SSH client and the Blink software. So sometimes I go back to Safari and I'm on there for a little while. It times me out of the Blink app because it's not active. Now with Stage Manager, I can have kind of the Blink app in the background and on the front is my Safari browser. And it doesn't log me out of that Blink uh, software, uh, of that SSH session. Another application for this is I like to listen to a lot of music or podcast on YouTube itself. And sometimes I don't necessarily need to watch what's on the video. I just want to listen to the audio. And before, before Stage Manager, if I got out of the YouTube app, it would stop the audio. So now I can just have the YouTube video playing in the background and just listen to the audio while I'm doing something else on another application. As far as content creation is concerned, can I do content creation? I would say yes. In fact, moving forward, I think this is gonna be my main computing device as far as content creation is concerned. Now, I'm not only talking about Final Cut Pro on the iPad, which I will do a dedicated video, but I'm talking about my overall workflow as far as content creation is concerned. I'm using a new setup here as far as filming is concerned, and it's been a real game changer. It's really streamlined some of my processes. Now, the last video I did as far as a product video, and this video that you're seeing now is all edited on Final Cut Pro using the iPad. Some of it was, some of it was filmed using the iPad, and it was uploaded using the iPad. So this has been a real game changer for me. So this has been my experience of using the iPad only, especially on those five days I was in San Francisco. Now, is this gonna replace my laptop or my desktop anytime soon? Probably not, but we are steps closer to that point. Especially as software improves and my needs change, we'll get a little bit closer to that point as well. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and consider hitting that subscribe button. Again, I mentioned that I will be doing some videos in the near future on using the iPad especially for content creation as far as Final Cut Pro is concerned and my workflow is concerned as well. Until the next one, see ya.